What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna work on getting some of these cooling lines made up. I've got some stainless steel in. I don't have all the parts in yet, so we're just gonna start mocking things up. We won't finish it this weekend. We'll get to it maybe next weekend or sometimes this week maybe. But I also have a little update on the drive shafts and I'll show y'all what I'm talking about on the front drive shaft as well. What our plan's gonna be on it and then also, well, let me just show you. So a while back, whenever I was going to put this engine in, I went ahead and just took out the front drive shaft completely just to make everything easier. Now I knew whenever I was going to need to kind of measure for the front drive shaft here and figure out some stuff, I was gonna to need to put it back in. So we went ahead and actually mounted it back up here. And one of my viewers, John, had left a comment on the last video where we were kind of generally talking about the drive shafts and how to measure it about this front drive shaft. He had left a comment about how the carrier bearing up there would need to be kind of relocated because the front yoke here would hit the engine. And it that is true. We are going, ugh, let me move around under here a little bit. We are going to need to basically relocate the carrier bearing just a little bit. I'll show you all here in a second what my plan is, but if we position it back up where it originally was, it is super close to the engine transmission, everything there. So, so what I'm thinking is we'll probably just relocate the carrier bearing further down on this plate that it bolts up to. Now I'll probably have to create another plate that basically just shifts the mounting points down it'll bolt up to basically the same locations that are on the original plate and then just give me uh, a couple of more locations to bolt in that carrier bearing but also what i want to possibly consider is moving this yoke either um, forward in the drive line or back just a little bit because when moving this kind of where i'm thinking it's going to go we are still kind of close with basically where our transmission mounts up to our engine here uh, it'd be a little bit nicer if we could get it just a little bit of ways from there, maybe back a little bit. Uh, just more into one of these pockets that doesn't have a whole lot going on in it. And that's why I'm thinking about just going ahead and having the driveline place go ahead and make the rear drive shaft. And I'll come back in here later and maybe actually just take this to them and see what they think on the front. But sorry for the video guys, it is pretty dark under here and these cameras don't like it when it's dark they kind of get all grainy and stuff so now that we talked about that let me talk about what we're gonna do with the cooling lines up front so I went ahead and ordered some stainless steel tubing here uh, for our lower radiator tubing that we're gonna be kind of fabricating up so we do have the original lower radiator tubing here which went up on the passenger side up to the underside of the radiator there's a little piece basically this piece it went on there and went up into our radiator on the bottom part and this kind of went straight back and that went up on the passenger side. So now on our new engine here we actually have a driver's side uh, location for our water pump there. So what we're going to need to do is basically run it from the driver's side over to the passenger side and up through basically kind of where the diff and everything is there. Now I have seen somebody run the tubing up on the driver's side of the diff and everything here but it does look like there's just going to be a lot more room over here on the passenger side still so i'll probably still end up keeping it going through the diff area on the passenger side i just will need to figure out a way to go from over here down and under the drive shaft or see if i can cut it in between there and keep it a little bit closer up to the engine but i'm not sure yet so i'm going to play around with some of the bins a little bit see what i can fit in and then probably just start cutting and fabbing so we may end up doing this in a few different pieces so i can keep everything uh, basically easier to put up on there and everything so we may do it in two pieces we may do it in three not really sure uh, but first off i'm going to start on this piece and get that fabbed up and we can chop that down later if we need them shorter or whatever, but first off, this thing. So we got approximately 117 degrees on this first bin here. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over to this piece and cut off what we need. And then we'll have a little bit of a straight piece in here. And then likely I'll be able to use some of that as well. Go ahead and cut that piece also. Um, I'm not going to finish off the ends yet because I don't know where they're going to go. Uh, we will need to go from two and a half inch to two inch uh, for that radiator tubing there to go up to the radiator. So anyway, I'm going to get to cutting. There we have the first piece we have kind of mocked up. I just have it taped in place right now. I think I may actually kind of rotate this a little bit a certain way. 
it'll put me out in a better location back here to connect into the next piece to go up underneath the drive shaft. All right, so our previous piece actually comes out kind of almost perfectly right here. What I'd like to do is kind of curve it down here between these up underneath our drive shaft right here. Kind of basically go up and around and up into our inlet right there. Now we're gonna have probably a 45 or something that comes off, kicks it out here. And then we'll start our curve around up under and connect to our other piece. And I'm hoping to go ahead and do kind of a coupler here. That way I can take the two pieces off separately. So that piece will be a lot easier to get in there without all this other stuff on here. Also about right here is probably where I'll go ahead and put the drain. I have that coming in. It is just gonna be kind of the same type that you can go under there and just uh, unscrew by your hand there if you will need to drain it. So I am going to start kind of cutting pieces and mocking up for up around here and I'll show you what I got here in a minute. All right, so this is what we got so far. Now this is definitely not gonna be the finished product here or anything, but basically we have it kind of going around our drive shaft there from that inlet and then we'll have basically a connection that I'll need to make here. Uh, I haven't decided if I want it in this piece to curve or in this piece to curve and then but anyway there'll be a connection around there. Now the only issue I'm seeing with kind of running this around the drive shaft uh, so far anyway is the steering well I gotta go to the other side. Nope never mind I gotta go underneath. So again, sorry for the bad picture up under here. It's pretty dark and it's trying to compensate for the low light. But basically if I go around the drive shaft, I gotta be careful of the pintle arm here, the steering pintle arm. Now I need somebody to help me basically turn this to full lock. Once I have it kind of to full lock, I can tell if I'll be able to get it by around kind of the back part here, which doesn't move. Uh, the front part here moves whenever you turn left and right. So if I'm able to kind of get it on this side, if it'll have enough room there to where that will still turn full lock without hitting our tubing there. But I'm gonna have to wait till I get somebody here to kind of help me with that. Definitely not strong enough just myself trying to kick these big wheels and tires around uh, without any power steering or anything connected there. Uh, either that or I'll have to lift up the front end to turn them and then just set it back down. But I kind of got something in the way right now. All right, so I got some people to come help me turn the wheels on here. I basically just ended up having to jack the front end up and basically turn it to full lock just so I could check the arm on there. And so we're actually good on this. This isn't going to hit that arm at all. Uh, we clear that and actually we clear the drive shaft through there just fine as well. So it sits about like that. Right now it kind of comes back up at the bottom, which is pretty good. That way it has a low spot here for our drain. Plus, that'll keep uh, basically everything up, maybe except for just a tad of this bottom part uh, above all the control arms underneath there as well. Now, on this piece, I actually took out the straight piece that I had between here, put a little bit more curve. It's just taking me a little bit longer doing the little modifications, just trying to get things to fit just right. I wanna make sure that I have clearance around a lot of the stuff under there. I'm taking my time with it. This is where we're at now for this weekend. Now, I may end up being able to do a little bit more later on this week. Uh, I may not, so we're gonna have to see on these. So I may not have out a video this week. I may try to roll it all together so that I can show you all the finished product on these. All right guys, almost a couple of weeks later now, I haven't been able to work on this a whole lot. So I got a little bit done. Let me show you where we're at now. Hopefully we get this whole radiator tubing thing situated and done this weekend so we can move on to some other stuff before we get this body back on there. So here's what we have so far. This is the part that goes around the differential. Basically it'll sit mounts up to a mount in there. So it's kind of like that. Now you see my mark here. I am gonna need to cut it a little bit. I need this to kind of come out this way a little bit more. I may cut it back further and keep a curve to it and come out. Or I may just cut there and do kind of a pie cut on it. This is the part that is going to go around the drive shaft up into the engine. Now, whenever I put these in place, I believe this one I'm going to actually end up having to cut basically at the very bottom of this curve because it kind of curves down and then back up a little bit. So basically at the very bottom, I'm going to need to cut and then actually put in just a probably about a three inch 
piece in there. That way this curve that's supposed to come up into this part needs to be shifted over uh, two to three inches. So we'll end up cutting that, splicing in about two to three inch piece there, which will push this over just enough to go ahead and get in here. So I'm going to work on these two things, getting this to where it kind of comes out a little bit more. And then this one, I'm going to end up mounting back up in there where it needs to go. Uh, and then we'll basically mark that off, cut it, extend it, weld it back up. And then I believe everything's pretty much good to go. So we have everything pretty much hooked up now on this lower radiator tubing. So this is actually just a factory Humvee lower radiator hose. And I basically built everything off of that so that I could still use this. You can kind of see through there where I've come out uh, underneath the fan there. So a couple of more things to do on this. This isn't quite done yet. Um, I'm going to need to go ahead and drill out a hole here to fit a stainless bung that I got. And then it also has a drain valve. So I'll have a drain valve just like the other uh, radiator tubing that came out of the Humvee. Also probably about here, I may end up going ahead and drilling out and putting a, another tube that comes off of here. That will go uh, to our, basically our overflow tank for our radiator. Uh, that's how the original kind of was, had a uh, kind of a tube that came off here and went up to that overflow. So. I'll probably try to keep it the same there. Also, on a LMM Duramax, the original truck, I can't find any information on where the heater core fluid goes after it goes through the heater core. So let me get on top of the engine here and I'll, see, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So over on the driver's side of the engine here, if we come down here, uh, there's a port here for our coolant. And that is actually where the coolant came out and went to our EGR. Now I'll probably still use that. I may end up plugging it and moving it to a different location, but likely I'll still use that if I can in order to feed our heater core inside the cab. On the old engine, it had the input and output for the heater core basically up front. And this one, we're gonna try to use that other location. So I have to come up with where the heater core fluid goes after it goes to the heater core. I'm not really sure, but I may end up just teeing it in with the connection that goes down into the bottom uh, along with our basically our overflow tank that's going to be around here as well. If any of y'all have a Chevy Duramax truck or GMC or whatever, where does that line go after it goes to the heater core on y'all's trucks? I've tried looking and looking online and there's no pictures of it. I can find a picture of the firewall for the input and output, but it doesn't trace down where the line goes after that. So if y'all have that information, please let me know. Since I have to pull out the lower radiator tubing again anyways to do a few things, I'll go ahead and kind of mock it up on the bench so y'all can see kind of how it goes on the bench instead of up under there trying to see it as it snakes through everything. There we go. It's kind of mocked up on the bench here. This is from where the engine is. Curves down around the drive shaft that's here back up and around up through there that's kind of cockeyed sideways it's more like that so i'm going to go ahead and drill the hole over here for that drain let me show you all what i got for that so this is what we're going to put in for the drain it's just a kind of a stainless steel bung and then has a twist drain valve there same as kind of what was already on the old lower radiator tubing and that'll go right up under here so whenever we need to drain the fluid, we can. And there we go. Now we have our little drain there. So I went ahead and ordered some inch and three quarter mandrel bent stainless steel tubing for this upper radiator hose. Uh, whenever I get that in, I'll go ahead and make uh, the upper. Probably won't show it on any episode or anything, but I'll probably show you all whenever I get it done. So that's gonna do it for us this weekend, guys. I'm going to spend the rest of today. The sun's already going down. But I'm gonna spend the rest of today in here cleaning up a little bit, trying to tie things down. Also doing a little bit of research as well. I know this video came out late, but the holidays kind of get a little hectic and time kind of runs thin. So I'm gonna try to keep getting these out weekly, but we'll have to see as Christmas and New Year's and everything comes around here. Again, thanks for watching guys. If you like this, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, I'll see y'all next time.